on the sidelines of uh, the COP27, uh, as we did uh, witness the signing ceremony between Egypt and uh, the European Union regarding two memoranda of uh, understanding, one of them about uh, Nuwafi, uh, the food security, the water security for the future generations here in the country, uh, and of course the renewable hydrogen or the green hydrogen uh, for the future generations. I'm honored to be having uh, with me on Nile TV International for today, uh, Dr. Heike Harmgart uh, from uh, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. Thank you very much for being with us uh, today on Nile TV International in uh, Sharm el Sheikh. Uh, how do you see the importance of this signing ceremony, of course, witnessed by um, uh, the uh, Minister of International Cooperation, Dr. Daniel Mashad, the Minister of Electricity, Dr. Mohammed Shaker, uh, th the big signings uh, between Egypt and the European Union? What does this say about the relationship between both entities? Thank you for having me today. It's a great day, I think, for Egypt, for energy partnership, and for partnerships at large. I think today witnessed really an enormous amount of showcasing the friendship and the partnership between the country of Egypt, the European Commission, and we as the European Development Bank, we can really help uh, structure and make Nuwafi energy a reality. So today's signings are really critical for showcasing how all of these partners come together in terms of showcasing the future. We can all go towards green hydrogen together. Egypt has enormous resources. It has the sun, the wind, also sizable gas, and it has the opportunity with the Suez Economic Canal to really leverage its strategic location to move green hydrogen to the future. And we saw today Europe is interested in buying green hydrogen, so there is a global market for it. And so we now need to just come together, use all our instruments in terms of financing and blending to make it really scalable, to make it happen. So today, in the presence of all these Egyptian ministers, we really saw a huge commitment from the Egyptian government. We had not just one commissioner, but also the executive vice president from the EU here, huge commitment from the EU. And we as the development partners as EBRD, you know, we really are here to make it technically supportive so that we can see this is a cop of moving from the pledges, from the talks, really to implementation. Yes, uh, Dr. Ranya al mashad in specific, they highlighted the role of uh, the EBRD uh, in terms of financing for Egypt in the past years and for the future pledges uh, as well. What made you in the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development to be thinking seriously about Egypt in terms of investing and pumping money uh, for the future in uh, the process of uh, protecting the environment, preserving uh, the green energy for the future generations? I think we in EBID saw the huge potential of uh, Egypt's energy um, early on. So we were one of the first investors in the Ben Ban solar project. We are financing half of Ben Ban, and we saw this is a huge potential for sun and wind energy. And we saw this is a country that not can only generate electricity in a green fashion for its own consumption, but actually can generate excess electricity for the world at large. So I think we started with Ben Ban, but we didn't stop there. Since then, we have invested enormous amounts of money into sun, wind, energy efficiency, but now also supporting the policy around green hydrogen. So yesterday we had a launch of the strategic framework for green hydrogen for Egypt that EBID had been tasked to support in the presence of Minister of International Cooperation, Minister of Electricity and Minister of Petroleum. So really showcasing there is now a strategic framework. There is huge interest from the private sector. So we hope we're going to put a lot more money into the sector than we used to. Uh, and finally, um, the world is facing great challenges and hurdles. Uh, one of them is the European Union and Egypt as well in the same process with the Ukrainian Russian conflict, with the coronavirus pandemic before that, with all the economic hardships that we have seen. Um, what are the uh, processes or uh, the ways of going through those hurdles to be achieving what we want, as you mentioned, um, going from the phase of uh, pledges and speaking into implementing on the ground and getting results. Absolutely right. The global backdrop is really challenging. I mean, we just got out of a global pandemic. There's the war in Ukraine. I think that's really a challenging environment in which to achieve climate ambition. But I actually think this is also a great opportunity to fast track and to accelerate the green transition because we cannot depend on fossil fuels for the largest part of our energy consumption. And we see we need more green energy. So I think it seems a difficult environment. And yes, it is. But actually, countries like Egypt, with this abundance of renewable resources, can make a difference in fast-tracking renewable energy and the share of renewables. And we saw Egypt just now um, increasing its ambition and um, 
moving forward its green energy target from 2035 to 2030 so we can see countries like Egypt as a host of COP can make a huge difference globally but is it indeed a difficult environment but maybe it shows us we need to move faster on the renewable track not slower. Yes, uh, Dr. Heike Harmgaard uh, from the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development thank you very much for being with us today. Great pleasure thank you so much for having me.